Welcome, Senator Sharon Brown. It's so good to have you today. Great, Stephanie. Super excited to be here, although times in Olympia are really different. Yeah, I, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from there. I would love to hear a little bit more about what, what this session has been like. Well, how's it going? It's very frustrating for me as a legislator because the Capitol campus is, I understand the need for security, but the Capitol campus is so locked down that I myself can't even come and go. Um, this morning when I tried to walk into my office building for work, as I always do, swipe my badge, um, it, the little card reader goes from red to green but yet a security guard still has to come out. He has to come over. He has to escort me into the building and close the door. And it, it just, my gosh, this is the building I've worked in. This is the building, gonna, you know, we're here. People know we're here. Let's, um, let's allow us to do our jobs. Yeah, I, I definitely can understand the, the frustration that might be there regarding that. Uh, as far as the, the session though, our, what do you see really as, as the legislation that would interest our business uh, membership? What, what, would, what would pique their interest? No, you, you serve on committees that, that- Where to start, Stephanie? Yeah, I know, I know, that's a loaded question, I know. There is so much that pertains to business this session. Um, I'll talk really briefly about a piece of legislation that I have that will definitely help our businesses. It's uh, Senate Bill 5244, which is about promoting advanced reactors. As a lot of people in our community know, the Department of Energy, um, the Federal Department of Energy, uh, gave out two grants for $80 million each to two companies. Uh, one is Terra Power, which is headquartered in Bellevue, and the other is X Energy, which is looking at putting an office in Richland. And so what my bill does is it incentivizes the supply chain. And as we all know, you know, companies have options. You don't have to locate or keep your company in the state of Washington. And as a matter of fact, as a result of all the pending potential tax increases, that are coming um, to our state, a lot of companies are looking elsewhere. We are competing fiercely for the supply chain business with our neighboring state of Idaho. So that bill would go a long way to keeping those businesses in the state of Washington. So really excited about that piece of legislation. You know, of course, we've all heard the um, the talk about capital gains, and there is a bill out there for capital gains tax, uh, which is effectively an income tax. So we're also hearing a lot about increases in gas taxes and on and on and on. And I'm here to tell you as one of the budget writers for our side, there is no need for any taxes this year. We actually have um, a decent amount of money in our reserves and we can definitely tap into that. We have a $1 billion surplus right now. And that would be, we would be able to do everything we need to do. We would able to fund our most vulnerable and our programs such as Meals and Wheels and things that are really near and dear to not just our community's heart, but to the heart of the entire state, making sure that our seniors, especially in this vulnerable time, get those meals making sure that our DD, our developmentally disabled community is taken care of. We can do all that without raising taxes. There's absolutely no need to raise taxes. Yeah, I saw that, do we have a revenue projected increase of 7%? So, we actually do, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I understand that as well. As far as what's happening in the business finance and trade committee, are, is there anything where you would might see the need for advocacy as far as the chamber or other uh, businesses? Uh, in I would say absolutely keep signing up for those hearings. So when we had 5114, which is the bill that would actually move us all into phase two, which is we desperately, desperately need that. Freedom of choice. If you don't want to go to those businesses, you don't have to go to the businesses, but allow the businesses to open. Or we're not going to have the businesses upon which the governor is basing all these taxes. It's mind boggling to me. So that advocacy is so important. I know um, it's very frustrating because some of the chairs are actually cutting off testimony 
after just a few seconds and the mic actually goes dead and that's very frustrating, but I would encourage you just keep signing up so that people understand how important these things are to not just the eighth legislative district, which is our district, but to the entire state. Businesses need to be open and they need to be open now. Thank you so much for all the work you're doing in Olympia uh, for our business community. Um, we know how busy you are uh, and, and it's going into the weekends now too for you trying to get that budget. Oh uh, gosh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely 24 seven is spent all afternoon, six hours in a budget meeting on Friday, a bunch of time on Saturday and more time on Sunday. And actually last night I was, um, we were reviewing some of the budget materials that we are examining and, and really, like I said, I can't stress enough, there is no need for new taxes. And another piece of legislation I wanna give a huge shout out to our community for bringing this to light is Senate Bill 5327, which is Youth Empowered to Speak Up. This is the statewide youth suicide prevention tip line that we're trying to get put into place. And through the hard work of our community, particularly Kirk Williamson and Connor Mertens, they have really shined a light on why this is so incredibly necessary. A statewide tip line is a little bit of a mis misnomer because it leads you to believe it's just a phone number. It's actually an app that would be on your phone. And when you're trying to reach our youth, you got to reach them through an app because as a parent, I can tell you, I can call my kids all day long <laughs> and they're not going to respond. But as soon as I text them, boy, they're Johnny on the spot and they're, they're responding straight away. And so it would be so helpful. What we've been able to do is we've been able to look at what other states have done when they implemented their youth suicide prevention tip lines. We've looked at Michigan, Colorado, Connecticut, Oregon, many other states over the past two years, and they have been very forthcoming with resources for us. So we've not had to reinvent the wheel. It's been a great learning experience. We've been able to extrapolate all the really um, parts and pieces from those other states that have been working very well. And because those other states have had these tip lines in effect for the past couple of years, they have reports back to their legislatures. And so we've been able to see what's really been working. And a youth suicide prevention tip line saves lives. And now during a global pandemic, when our kids are feeling more isolated than ever, we absolutely need to have an additional tool in the box that they can reach out and touch someone, immediately get to resources that are going to help them. Well, thank you so much for all of your great work in that regard. I know that that we're all thankful and grateful and especially for helping us to, to get those businesses open so that we they can start functioning and bringing in some revenue um, to get everyone feeling better and out there just a little bit more. I mean, we're not asking to be open up fully. Uh, maybe we're not ready for that for a while, but but to just give us a little uh, open space to, to work with and I think and that everyone business, wants to be safe. Well, I was just going to say that, Stephanie, you hit the nail on the head. Businesses don't want to subject themselves or their employees to getting sick. I mean, COVID, we've seen the effects on some people, of what COVID can potentially do. They don't want that for their employees. They want to do it safely. They have the measures put into place to do it safely. I think we are only one of two states now that has not moved into opening businesses. Oh my gosh, Governor Newsom, LA hotspot in the entire country just opened up businesses. There is a way to do this safely. It's time and we agree with you and thank you so much. Any, any closing comments before we close up? I believe that we have an incredible opportunity this session to really get engaged and keep engaged because of remote testimony. Uh, I was so honored to start working on remote testimony with Jason Mercier from the Washington Policy Center several years ago. So for us in the Tri-Cities, we've laid the groundwork. It's there. It's available. I understand the frustrations with it. But let's show people that even in this global pandemic, we want to be engaged. These issues are important to us. 
And as we always do in the Tri-Cities, we will lead the way. Thanks again for joining us, Sharon, to Session Spotlight. We, we're just so grateful for you, Senator. Oh, gosh, it's just been an honor, Stephanie. We've got a great district. We know how to get stuff done. I'm honored. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Bye. Yeah.